Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the Avid Tent Camper. In this video, I want to tell you about our recent trip to Douthat State Park in Virginia. Let me show you around our campsite. We're in Site 4 of the White Oak Campground. You can see we've got our kitchen canopy set up here. Uh, back on the back side is our tent. And we've got our car backed up to the kitchen canopy so that all of our food stays in the car. But we can access it easily uh, from, from our kitchen canopy. The campsite has a very nice picnic table that can be moved, but it is very heavy and I have not tried to move it. It has a fire ring, one of the adjustable height grate. It's nice and large. So you can see we've got room for our six person tent and our kitchen canopy with our car. Back behind our canopy, we've got both uh, water and electric hookups. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit of shade. Quite a few trees around our campsite with quite a bit of afternoon shade. We like it and wish that we could stay longer. Let me give you a brief overview of the park. It is located in west central Virginia, about 220 miles southwest of Washington, D.C. The park was established in 1936 and many of its structures were built by the Civilian Conservation Corps. The park is a relatively narrow strip of land that runs south to north along the banks of Wilson Creek for about seven miles. The Douthat Park Road also follows along this creek from the south to the north. Along this park road you'll find several picnic areas, a, lar a small lake with a swimming beach and boat rentals, a restaurant and camp store with a Wi-Fi hotspot, several cabins that were built by the CCC, and other stone structures that were built by the CCC. Throughout the park you'll find several firewood self-serve kiosk and the firewood is pretty good. Four campgrounds are also located along this park road. Whispering Pines is located near the southernmost entrance. It is the only place in the park that has cell phone signal and so Ava and I drove down here almost every day to check our phone messages and to make phone calls. It is the only campground in which you can reserve a specific site and it has the nicest bathroom in the park. This is the little overview of the men's room. But the campsites are very open with very little shade and it would be my last choice for tent camping. The White Oak Campground is located in about the middle of the park just across the road from the park office. You can guarantee a spot in advance in this campground, but you cannot reserve a specific site until you get here and occupy the site. This is where Ava and I stayed. It has a nice, clean and spacious bathhouse and shower building. And our campsite was right across the road from it. Lakeside Campground was located on the north shore of the lake. Again, you can reserve a spot in this campground, but you cannot reserve a site until you're physically arrive and occupy the site. This campground is a more rustic and a little more crowded, and as a result, the camping fees here are a little bit lower. But Ava and I spent a lot of time in this campground fishing for trout, and we found the people here to be very friendly. The bathhouse in this campground is very old, but clean. Notice the hardware on the door appears to be hand-forged 
back during the 1930s. This is the creek where Ava fished for trout every day. And this is the fish cleaning station that she used. The Beaver Dam campground is an equestrian campground located near the north entrance of the park, but we never drove through this campground. Now let me share a few highlights of our trip. We left our home early Monday morning about 5 a.m. and drove steady until we reached the Virginia Welcome Center about noon. We had a nice lunch out of the back of our car, walked around, took a little bit of a nap, and then headed on to the park, but quickly ran into rain. We finally reached the park about 6 p.m., and by that time the office was closed, but they had an envelope outside the front door with instructions about how to find a campsite. To get to our campground, we had to nervously drive across this little bridge, but we were happy to see the signs that prohibited generator use. By the time we arrived at our campsite, it was raining, but we decided to go ahead and set up in the rain, and quickly that light rain turned into a torrential downpour. Soon after setting up our campsite, the park ranger came by and informed us that the little bridge was about to flood and it would be closed until about noon tomorrow. We had to decide whether to stay or to leave. We decided to stay in our campsite. And we slept very well. The next morning we slept late and then had a big breakfast of bacon, eggs, grits, and toast. When the bridge opened about one o'clock, Ava went fishing for trout. Ava actually hooked two good-sized trout, but one got away before she could get it back to the shore. This is the one that she was able to get to shore. But while she was fishing, it started raining again, and this time we were trapped on the other side of the creek from our campsite and had no way to get to our tent. So we parked just outside the gate and hoped that the waters would recede sometime during the night. After waiting near the bridge for about an hour, a young park ranger came by and offered to lead us across another bridge, up a hill, and through the woods to our campsite. We took him up on the offer. We were very grateful to be able to take a shower and to sleep in our bed that night. About 11 o'clock, that park ranger came back and carried me back to the car because the water had gone down and I was able to drive the car up to our campsite. Wednesday morning, the sun came out and we had a great trout breakfast. You can see that the trout, one trout fills up the entire frying pan and was very thick. This photo shows the thickness of the trout a little bit better. After eating breakfast and taking a few photos around the park, we drove about 35 miles north to visit some friends, Tom and Connie. It was a very scenic drive through the mountains, and along the road we saw many animals, including a raccoon, deer, a five to six foot long dark snake, a smaller snake, and a red fox. When we arrived at their farm around two o'clock in the afternoon, Tom and Connie were working hard to get ready for around 20,000 baby turkeys that were to arrive tomorrow. But they took a break to show us around the farm and to visit for a couple of hours. Here are some of the animals on their farm. We had a great time talking about Mexico, farming techniques, YouTube video production, cast iron cookware, and many other topics of mutual interest. If you have a few extra minutes, check out Tom's YouTube channel called Virginia Stew. It covers a wide variety of topics including cooking, gardening, farming, animal husbandry, travel. 
camping, and much more. Thursday morning, Ava woke me up early and said, let's go fishing. But by the time we got to her fishing hole around 7.30, it had already been fished out. Several people had been fishing uh, for an hour or two before we got there and caught around 12 trout, but Ava didn't catch anything. But one of those fishermen must have felt sorry for Ava and gave us three of his smaller trout. So we brought those trout back to our campsite, cooked them up, and we had a wonderful trout lunch. Here's what it looked like. Later in the afternoon, we went back to the trout hole, and Ava fished about three hours and finally caught a medium-sized trout about sundown. Friday morning, we got up early, packed our campsite, said goodbye to one of our neighbors, and hit the road. This is the Tennessee Welcome Center. After an 11-hour drive, we pulled into our driveway about 6 p.m., and we're very thankful to be home. Well, I hope this video provides some helpful information that will allow you to decide whether you'd like to stay here at Douthat State Park or not. For more information about great tent camping destinations, please visit my website, www.basictentcamping.com. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping. In closing, listen to the whippoorwill that came to visit us in the middle of the night. <laughs>